had a really, really bad um, Brazilian Grand Prix in the race, particularly an absolute stinker. And the first time they have not been on the in the top five, I think it was uh, Interlagos um, in the last ten years or something crazy, um, which was Mercedes. Yeah, they fell off a cliff. They were absolutely terrible in that race. You know, they had a decent enough start in the sprint. I mean, George Russell got ahead of Lando Norris. On the first lap, um, but in the race with the tires, the straight line speed, there was absolutely no speed in that car. One iota, they were just falling back. They had to retire Russell in the end. Hamilton struggled to get a couple of points. You know, he had Gasly breezing past him. Logan, I'll go to you first. What on earth happened to Mercedes at Brazil? Because that was a shocker by their standards. Honestly, if I had to guess, I think they just really missed the setup because this isn't a car that we've seen had abysmal straight line speed at other track. You know, Red Bull's definitely been the best, but Mercedes was a boat in a straight line, so they had more drag on the car this weekend, you know, or they were nursing some engine issues, one or the other. But either way, you know, I mean, we didn't hear anything about them having engine issues. So it sounds like they just really missed the setup of the car this weekend. Isn't that well, why have, Russell retired? I thought his engine was overheating. I was just going to say it was actually the oil, had, the oil te- oil temps in the engine were too high, which was going to lead right, to yeah. an engine failure. So the actual components themselves right. yeah. were, you know, go on, Logan. It, it could be that. I mean, they had issues with overheating in uh, a little bit in 2018, but it didn't end up affecting them too much in the race. Bottas had to retire in 2019 due to overheating. And in 2017, they knew they were going to have issues with it. So they put a fresh unit in uh, Hamilton's car and he started from the back. And I suspect they knew in advance that they might have issues again in 2021 when they put another fresh unit in Hamilton's car there as well. So this just always has seemed to be a track that's kind of a stinker for Mercedes in terms of reliability, not in terms of results of course so maybe it's related i don't know i'm just speculating but the way they were talking about the car they were talking about as if like the package they brought was not good and a lot of times when they talk package mercedes didn't bring any like new improvements so the way they brought the setup of the car just seemed to also really miss the spot because they were down so much straight line speed and hamilton wasn't saying anything about an engine issue and you know that he's the first driver to say something's wrong so right yeah, I suspect that there was a, a miss setup in there, kind of like what Red Bull did in Singapore. Absolutely. Anything to add, Luke? I think that's fair. Yeah, honestly, it's just, you know, I'm a Mercedes fan first and foremost. I just felt like this race, in, in, yeah, I mean, performance-wise and, you know, just performance-wise in so many aspects was a stinker. You know, it was like as soon as I saw the sprint race results, P4 and P7, I was like, oh, this isn't great. I, I wasn't. You know, I, I hadn't, I didn't really have any confidence after that. Uh, it's like, you know, it, <laughs> you know, Lewis has had pretty good pace over the past couple of races, and then we like he's been getting P two. You know, it's been great to see. It, I thought it was like the return of Mercedes, right? I was like, this is awesome. We're seeing some really good pace. You know, Mexico is a fairly fast track, and he still got P two there. So I was like, great, we're probably gonna have some decent. We're gonna have a decent outing here in you know Brazil. It's a fairly fast track, some nice sweeping corners. You know, it, it'll be awesome to see. But it's like Lewis just didn't have the pace for most of the race. George was complaining about the strategy for most of it. You know, uh, he's talking about like, hey, let me pass Hamilton, and his team was telling him the entire time, like, no, you need to conserve your tires. So it's like, I don't know, like, what the strategy mix, like, if they had a strategy mix up, if they just committed to the wrong thing. You know, it almost gave me like flashbacks to like you know, Ferrari in 2020, you know, like constant arguments about your setup and then something not working out right. You know, it's just, it was a really confusing race. It seemed for them. Like, I, I feel like there was something like maybe Lewis just abandoned the strategy they had. Cause at a certain point, you know, he left George, he like, he like kept pushing or he was going too fast for George and then George fouled a DRS. And I think part of the race fell apart from there. You know, I mean, it's like that's just that's when Perez got around Russell and then Perez came right after Hamilton. Um, obviously, George DNF'd because his engine was going to overheat, which sucks. 
Um, I don't know. It was just, it was a little frustrating. Honestly, this race is just terrible. And also it makes me wonder about some of the inner conflict in the team. You know, we see George kind of throw, I, we were talking about this on Twitter the other day. I think he's throwing too many fits, honestly, but I don't know if they're justified or not. It, it seems like maybe it's just continuous bad strategy from Mercedes. You know, I feel like George is complaining a lot about like, Hey, I'm faster. Let me buy. So is it bias? Is it George honestly throwing a fit? Is it just bad strategy? Like, are they trying to preserve their tires too much? I just don't understand what's going on right now. You know, they're still getting decent results, but I don't know what it is, like what, what the complications are we, we keep seeing, you know? It's not necessarily they always race ruining, but this race, definitely something ruined it, you know? I mean, I, I just don't understand right now. I mean, what do you think, Logan? I mean, inner team conflict's always difficult. What do you think? is the solution is it something with their strategy or something with the drivers i think it's a little bit of both i mean the strategy was messed up but at the same time maybe they knew they were nursing an issue you know there's so much information we don't know and we know that hamilton is the type of guy that he wants to be a number one driver that's the end of question and we know that george russell got some great assets and great confidence and he thinks he can be a world champion one day and i really like that about him i love the guy's confidence he's here to say I'm not here to sit back. I'm here to go for this. You know, you got to appreciate that as a driver. He's right, made he some from Williams for a reason, you know? Yeah. He made some mistakes last year in quality, kind of like you would see like these Red Bull second drivers move up, make mistakes and then back it up too much and kind of fall off a cliff from there. The opposite happened. He cleaned up his mistakes. He found the limit and then he outperformed him last year and it's close this year. You know, he's, he's a great driver. I think it's just all boiling up of, he doesn't want to be complacently placed as a number two driver like Bottas did. So when the team is maybe inevitably the best team again, that he's just pushed to the side because, I mean, that's an argument I'll make all day. Was Bottas better than Hamilton? No, but he was definitely competitive with Hamilton and they were screwing him over a lot. They were saying, we have team policies. We do the same strat. Next thing you know, they're doing the opposite strat in a moment's notice. You have Hamilton better you need to drive her behind, you name it, you know. Yeah. So what they're one thing and they're doing the opposite. And Russell was there seeing that firsthand as a Williams driver wanting to move to that team. And if I had to make a guess, it's that he doesn't want to be the next Bottas, so to say, and allow mm-hmm. that. So I feel like that's why he's being firmly said, you know, let me through. I'm here to race just as much as Hamilton. I see right. both sides. You know, maybe I'm wrong and he is just being a complainer. I don't know. You know, I don't have all the information, but that's just my perspective. Would you see that as a fault without like team coherency? I mean, you kind of need that, right? I mean, look at way back with like McLaren in 2018, 2019, 2020, right? With Lando and Carlos, we had perfect like like synchronization between them the whole time. So do you think that having this like dispute, this kind of restlessness between the two drivers, you know, obviously Hamilton's looking back, looking for more pace again. Russell's looking to prove himself. Like, what do you think of that, CJ? Do you think there's going to be conflict in the future with these two both being hungry? I mean, we have Lewis continually performing, like performing better, but how do you think it's going to affect Russell? I actually think Russell doesn't do this enough. And I know that's probably a bit of a, a, a weird thing to say because people are saying now he's he's moaning a bit. But I, I remember seeing his radio, one of his first ones, he said, you know, I can I won't attack Lewis um so he can protect the tires and you know, I'll kinda of hold station and things like that. And then he kind of obviously got frustrated with that and then, you know, said the, the thing that we've seen before where, you know, are are we working together here or not and i think george has got to get real here if he wants to beat lewis if he wants to make it he is the number one at mercedes which is a big old task you're talking about one of the greatest drivers of all time he's against he's got to get ruthless he's got to take a page out of nico rosberg's book in my opinion because it's a ruthless thing i think if you play it too nice george i think lewis will take advantage of that and make you the next valtteri bottas he's got to get tough and start putting his foot down with the team and his teammate because I think that's been part of his downfall this season. He's made too many mistakes, but also I think he's tried to be a bit too diplomatic sometimes. There's going to reach a point, like Logan's indicated before, where things are going to kick off at Mercedes. And when they're winning races again, which surely will come back again, 
he's going to need to kind of make that decision with himself. Am I am I going to win championships with Mercedes, or am I going to help Lewis win championships? I think George is good enough to do you know the former, to win. you know win win championships. Yeah. But he's got to get that ruthless edge to him. At the minute, by playing it nice with Hamilton, I'm afraid that never works. You look at any teammate Hamilton's had, and they play it nice with him, they become second fiddle. And so I think George needs to just get to the end of the season and have a bit of a reset in the in the winter break and come back firing next season on, on all cylinders and uh, grab the bull by the horns, really. You know, he needs to, you know kind of stamp down some authority you know it, he's good enough it's like he, he's up there with people like Landon Norris and all these other drivers but if you allow yourself to become the support driver Mercedes when they have the car to fight Verstappen they will 100% favor one driver over the other you cannot go ahead against Verstappen with two drivers going at each other and Mercedes will yeah, will make that happen. They will implement team orders. And um, on George's, yeah, if you're looking at it from his shoes, sure. he has to get he has to start doing something about it, which I don't think he's quite doing yet. I think he's just being a little bit too nice, right. and that's my opinion. I think it's hard because you know Mercedes has recently in their most dominant. They've been built as a one party or well, okay, not all of their dominance, but their most dominant era was built as a one party team. You know, you had Valtteri Bottas putting up great performances, but he really was the rear gunner for Lewis Hamilton. You know, 2021, we saw Max Verstappen bring it to Hamilton, and ultimately, you know, even like Bottas wasn't able to even do anything about it. He was able to fend off Perez, but, you know, that's the, that's the most reason that we can say about it. So I, I totally agree. You know, as soon as things do kick off, you know, Russell is definitely going to want to put his foot down. I think it's going to be hard to see that you know most teams are built as a one driver team you know i think ferrari it like probably struggled with that a bit last year you know because leclerc was leading the championship for a very short period of time you know so it's like now we see thankfully leclerc and signs i think vibing a little bit better but we still saw you know them being close at something like monza you know they, they were taking shots at each other but i, I think that's what we might that's what we're going to get if russell like gets really restless, but I don't know if the team's going to be okay with it or if they're going to have to put one of the drivers down essentially, you know, I, that would be my worry. I think that's the thing, Luke. I mean, you guys may not have seen it, uh, but on the Sky Sports coverage here in the UK, they did a very interesting feature with Ferrari because they followed them in Mexico behind the scenes with the engineers. And oh, I didn't see one of yet. them said a very interesting point, which I put in our, our Twitter chat that, with Carlos and, and Charles in the Ferrari, they try and make the setup balance it out for both drivers. In previous years, they've had this real problem of trying to find the right setup for both of them when sometimes it's, it's benefited Carlos more and other times it's benefited Leclerc more. You, were kind of, you can kind of work it out if you look at the last few seasons which driver's been ahead of each, um, sorry, each other. You can kind of work out when they've managed to get it better for one. Yeah, because they both have very different driving styles. You know, Leclerc's a much more aggressive driver behind the wheel than than Sainz. And they said this season they've struggled race by race to get the setup right for both drivers. So Ferrari are very much they want both drivers to be performing well and they do not favour one over the other at all. And they make that very clear. When I not sure right. with Mercedes, I'm not sure they know themselves what they want to do. If they want to keep that equal, or they they've got a bit of a conundrum there. They don't share setups at Mercedes, like in the Bottas yeah, yeah. Hamilton era. They did not share. Yeah, it was yeah. it was for Hamilton for sure. Some share setups, some teams don't. But that's interesting that Ferrari, the it drivers is. feedback on the setup, and then they give both of them the same setup. I mean, why wouldn't you just let them go their own directions? And then if you this see the one's thing. way faster in practice what he's doing say that's the other guy i don't know that just comes so, down to calling in the race at that point you know because like <laughs> that's why we had signs ultimately working with you know i mean ultimately he worked with norris but that's why we had signs obviously like he was let he was like told okay yeah go ahead do what you need to do and leclerc was a little bit thrown to the wolves you know mm -hmm.